Well, hello, hello. I wanted to share some stuff with you guys. So, I don't know if everybody remembers something called the Baltic Sea Anomaly. Um, came on the radar, well, the sonar, to be quite precise, somewhere around 2011. And I, I got excited by this Google Earth stuff. Uh, this Google Earth Oceans stuff uh, and went looking for it and I'm not sure if I found it. I don't think I did. I think that the anomaly is in deeper water. It's in about uh, 400 foot depth. Maybe 300 foot depth. Uh, about 300. But um, and it's very interesting. Um, it that this is a an object, the the Baltic Sea anomaly, which was discovered by side scanning sonar, um, and they came up with this, and a lot of people likened it to maybe a shape of like a Millennium Falcon or a UFO. Apparently, it's really very strange, but it's made of uh, basalt and nice and granite and a few other things. Um, so it's not metal, but the guys that went down there, a lot of their RV equipment was breaking. A lot of the camera equipment broke. A lot of the, uh, the 3d imaging that was taken of it was garbled. They got a lot of it back, uh, after it uh, underwent a lot of decryption. Uh, but they were able to rescue that, but, not before a lot of people accuse these guys of fabricating the, the things or it being nothing or people just saying it's a glacial deposit. It, it could be all of the above. It's just a very, very weird thing. Um, but it seemed to have some magnetic anomalies associated, an odd, oddly low temperature just above it. Um, some strange fog kind of gathered around them. Just by themselves wouldn't seem all that odd, except that, um, just if, if it was outside the context of this high strangeness that we find around such strange objects, what, what doesn't matter what they end up being. Um, and as we were talking in about in a previous episode, uh, it makes a weird kind of sense that ripples and changes and sudden anomalies in the, in the surface of the earth, whether those are put there by extraterrestrial events, impacts, um, uh, volcanic events, and changes in the surface, changes in density, changes in material, conductivity. These are all things that can lead to changes in shape of the magnetic field and in the earth, uh, above the earth, and in those those intersection points where the energy of the earth comes through, magnetic energy of the earth comes through, and uh, changes in direction and intensity due to changes in, you know, layering and, and uh, what's going on between the different materials. And, you know, it's not unreasonable to think that magma dipe dikes, magma domes, uh, different things like that, uh, extraterrestrial impact slugs, like that chunk of a meteorite sitting there in the, in the center of, of, of an event in the past could generate some weirdness, um, electromagnetic weirdness, um, gravitational weirdness, uh, not maybe nothing you, you, you'd feel outright, but we, the tr truth of the matter is that we uh, actually detect a lot of these shapes on the ocean floor with gravity measurements. So, whether or not that itself is affected, like gravity itself is affected, and that's debatable. Einstein, that's not violating physics or anything. Um, extreme amounts of energy moving very quickly uh, can create their own gravity field uh it's just debatable how much that is and how much you know how strong that is versus the field of gravity generated by the earth which is arguably 
well, we we detect it as a lot, but atom per atom, it's not right. That it's not a lot considering the fact that the sum total of all of the Earth's gravitational energy down to the center is only enough to keep you sitting in your chair. Um, and you, you have enough strength in your body to fight. That's the, the strength of all the gravity in the Earth. So that says how much on an atomic level is actually working. Um, without getting into gravity too much. Um, we can see how these sort of things generate some weirdness. Now, this could be a uh, glacial deposit. It could be a magma dome. It could be something else. Uh, and it should be said, the shape is odd. The structures are odd. It does look a little bit like some of the features in, of the Yonaguni uh, that is off the coast of... That's a very large rock outcropping formation off the coast of Japan. I haven't looked at that on Google Earth or anything like that. <laughs> Geologists will look at these things and say that that's um, the crystal habit of rock. Those channels and staircases and all these things are the way that the rock breaks. That's very common for basalt, and I'm not in disagreement. Um, what I am saying is that it's odd that these sorts of things, which occurred, you know, sort of in the areas where up until about you know, the end of the last ice age, these were areas that were exposed by, I'm going to go to Google Earth here. These are areas that were generally exposed by, um, you know, to the air. The ocean wasn't here. Um, 300 meters is nothing when you're talking about the, the sea level changes that take place in these major ice age shifts. So it's not unreasonable to say, could be a combination of things. Uh, you have a highly interesting geological feature that's a rock outcropping that's near the sh shoreline of the coastline um, that has, let's say, strange uh, geomagnetic subtle energies that people notice over time. They start going there. They carve the rock maybe into interesting shapes, enhancing the natural uh, clefts and uh, fissures that exist there. And that's not un unreasonable. Like indigen indigenous cultures around the world uh, do that uh, and carve geoglyphs according to natural shapes and rocks and natural breaks in rocks um, and in ways that mimic skylines and so on. Um, so let's say something like something like that. I I'm really everybody in science likes to find the answer. I'm more of an all of the above kind of guy. Somewhere along the lines, maybe that's copying out, but actually that therein lies some some reasonability. Um, now I couldn't find the Baltic Sea anomaly, but I was looking for it and I came across something very strange and I don't know what this is. And maybe somebody can <laughs> look at this with me. This is officially, I, you know, I marked it the Baltic Sea anomaly I went, and this is the limitation of Bard and these AIs. I went and asked the AI on Google what was the geolocation for the Baltic Sea anomaly. Of course, I kind of fed it some information first. I was like, I'm looking at this particular place, geolocation this, what can you tell me um, about it? And, and it told me it couldn't. Well, it, it gave me some interesting information. I'm not sure whether or not I could actually look at these images, but I said, hey, look at this. Um, and then I asked it for the location of the, the anomaly, and it said the exact coordinates I was looking at. I don't think that's what this is. I think I was getting like a ghost in the machine, some sort of echo. Um, and that, that may be my bad. This is still interesting nonetheless. This is like, I don't know what this is. Um, uh, some of the answers the, the AI gave were very interesting. Um, electromagnetic interference. Uh, the fact is that this Karankanan Matala, I'm so sorry, I'm not Swedish, so I'm probably butchering that, uh, is it's a, it's a refuge. It's a wildlife refuge for all sorts of birds, nesting and migrating birds. I guess it's like a little bit of an island, rocky outcropping kind of thing. 
Um, and it's interesting because again, you know, you have this sudden warping, uh, and geo fishing, you have sudden kind of rocky outcrops. I'm not sure if it's like basaltic or whatever, but it could, this could be the kind of thing that generates these magnetic fields, Espe- like not, maybe not gravity waves per se. You're going to get some changes in gravity, but those normal changes in gravity are what we use to map the ocean bottoms with our devices anyway. However, like that's, that's kind of a misleading. So we have these, the elect <laughs> the gravity measuring devices are still electromagnetic in nature. They're interferometers, sometimes strontium clocks and different things uh, that we use to detect changes in actual time and actual um, uh, relativistic, physics that that happen where gravity changes so it could could be if any of these are pictures some of some of that is these more deep water places but if any of these pictures are from those gravity devices on this the the ships that could be causing this uh this could be a mixture of pictures like i know some of this is overlaid with actual pictures what this a picture of you know like is this boat coming out of a harbor? I looked at some of the most busy harbors in the world. New York City, Los Angeles, uh, Paris, France, and so on. And, and I didn't see anything like this. So then that lends me, maybe it's biofluorescence. Like, that's a lot of biofluorescence. I've heard of big spots being seen from space, sometimes in the Indian Ocean. Um there's some weird stories out there. People thought it might again been UFOs or something. I don't tend to light on that, no pun intended. But this is just really weird. Did they catch a plasma storm? Why does it seem to be emanating? It seems to be emanating almost like if you look at this, it's got these kind of tentacles of light and plasma like formation stretching out here and here. And why is the coast and 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 this what, why this seeming like blob of information that seems to be missing um, from here where this starts. This is this is water, I believe, right here. And this is actual coastline. These are rocky outcroppings. But why is it like this? I'm, I'm leaving the possibility maybe I am looking at the anomaly. Um, this is maybe just big enough and open enough and wide enough that maybe they found some of these things near here maybe this particular used to be an isthmus um is is full of such interesting features now i will uh, remind people like very near here you know if you don't think that there's um the possibility of um structures and whole societies off the coast of various places like i'll i'll remind people that a little while they a little while ago they confirmed the once myth of Doggerland, which is this area in the North Sea. And if you notice, this is an entire just giant plateau out to here, right? There's even some islands and things off the coast. So if you imagine the look of this landmass um, during the last ice age, you've got all of this, right? And, and, and this depth is included. So this whole Baltic Sea region, these are really just all of a sudden this becomes like, if anything, lakes and canyons and valleys leading up to the mountains um, and kind of low, lowlands in this area, probably very fertile, I would guess, and this would have been very quickly flooded perhaps at the end of the last ice age. And that leaves it within reason that you could have these kind of, these could have been settled places. Um, And it's just real interesting. So some some of the ideas with, um, you know, the Baltic Sea Anomaly were man-made structures, uh, Stonehenge-like thing, natural formations, um, uh, extraterrestrial the 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 exotic extraterrestrial thing is probably ruled out given that it is found as normal metal 
or not normal metals, <laughs> normal rocks, and um, not metal. But there are interesting stories of floating rocks, gods on giant floating rock palaces uh, in Japan. Uh, allegedly, you know, legend goes that the Yonaguni off the coast is one of these. There's giant rock temples in in there, and they're, you know, it's very strange how they got there. Many of these things can't be explained conventionally, and the people around them believe a lot of the lore, for lack of a better explanation, that these things landed there from beings that could apparently manipulate these things. I'm not saying it's true or not, I'm just saying these giant rocks are there with strange carvings in them um, that are like perfect geometric shapes and stuff belying some advanced craft. We don't know. I'm not saying aliens. And it's entirely possible. And as far as we know, we are not the smartest humans that have ever lived on this planet. Um, so that just needed to be said. Um, the idea of a rock ship, that's literally the translation Yonaguni. That's flying rock ship. Yep. Um, and the we have the instance of Uru rock in um, in Australia. That's a iconic big red rock sitting there. Um, actually, turns out it extends into the ground some. Um, and uh, geologists are still rather perplexed on its its origin in nature, but. A lot of Aboriginal stories around there say it landed, didn't crash. You know, that's, it didn't crash there, it landed there. Uh, big difference, like if you ask any, any astrophysicist, they'll say, yeah, usually rocks from space are quite a big deal and make a lot of a loud noise <laughs> and a big, big crater, big bada boom. But these are just strange stories from our past about flo floating rocks. Um, interestingly enough, that's, you know, the, the, uh, legend and the deepest legends and mythologies for how the pyramids were constructed, but we won't go there this time. Um, I've already said enough crazy stuff. So anyway, here you have warping in the earth's crust, uh, density changes in uh, material. You have ch shape changes. You have possible locations where uh, humans once inhabited, believe it or not, um, at times that that pretty closely lines up with some megalithic structures and that have water damage and things that we recognize from times that may have come before um and i think i'll i'll leave it at that if anybody knows what the heck this is lightning phosphorescence uh, interference from powerful magnetic fields um let me know and i'll see you guys next time bye now